all are doing well because in these days when uh, there is uh, everybody getting infected so it is but natural that some people become worried no need to get worried so it is said you know there's a beautiful uh, statement in our scriptures it says chinta taaki kijiye je anaho ni hoy you should be worried about that which is going which is which should not happen is that so whatever has to happen will happen so uh, our worry will not going to change it ha ah, we should be concerned and careful but not worrying so there is a difference between the you know worry which is a mental uh, harping over something something wrong is happening something fearful ha ah, we should take care whatever best is possible but beyond that don't worry about it so well we shall begin with um, vedic shanti mantras as you all know <coughs> listening to mantras these uh, sanskrit chants has got a very salutary effect on the human mind and uh, prepares us for for spiritual you know concentration the mind is compared to uh, shri ram krishna makes a comparison to A, a small collection of uh, uh, seeds, small seeds, mustard seeds. Suppose those mustard seeds fall from your hand, they will go in different directions. And so, and gathering them is quite a job, quite a tough job. So, similarly, the mind it is scattered in different directions. So, we have to put it back. So, the first step towards that is. to create a kind of uh, mood so uh, meditation is not just you know you close your eyes and uh, start uh, struggling with your mind no rather let us begin with mind becoming more uh, more focused by calming and purifying it <coughs> the mind is busy with the with the whatever we consider as something very big something very uh something which immediately requires our attention i uh, bear generally our personal desires our ego our hurts all those things are the factors so that will not let our mind calm therefore we have to first of all strengthen the mind by expanding it so we speak of the glory of the infinite reality and we also focus on our inherent goodness and a prayer for goodness so these two are the things which i find in these shanti mantras one is prayer for the to the infinite reality and trying to expand our mind and secondly focusing on our inherent goodness and praying for that in various ways so i shall begin with chanting please close your eyes and stay tuned for about 4 you know, 5 minutes and uh, keep listening to them Om Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahano Bhunatu Sahaviryam Karvabhai Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu Ma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hari Hi Om Bhadram Karne Bhishun Yam Deva Bhadram Pashe Maksha Virya Jatra Sthirai Rangai Istushtuvagam Sastanu Hi Hi व्यशेम देवयु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न ऊषा विश्ववेदा स्वस्ति न स्ताक्षो वरिष्ठ नेमी स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिरदा तो ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ 
छन्नो मित्र वरुण छन्नो भवत्म छन्न इंद्रो बृहस्पति छन्नो विष्णुरुक्रम नमो ब्रह्मणे नमस्ते वायो प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्मासी तामीव प्रत्यक्ष ब्रह्म वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या कृतम वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या तन्मावत तद्भक्तावत अवतु भक्तारम ओ शांति 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 हरि ओ नम श्री अतिराजाय विवेकानंदसूर सच्चिसुखस्वूपाय स्वामीने तापहारिणे There is a famous Kalyana Prarthana. I shall chant that also. There are three verses. Please listen to that. Sarvetra Sukhinaha Santu Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschit Dukkham Apnuyat Sarvastaratu Durgani द्राणी पश्यत सर्व सद्बुद्धिमात्र नंद तो दुर्जन सज्जनो भूयात सज्जन शांति मापुनयात शांतो मुच्चेत बंधे मुक्त विमोचये ओ शांति 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 दिस लास्ट प्रेयर लास्ट टू वर्सेस दे एक्सप्लेन दे एलेबोरेट ऑन व्हाट वी मीन व्हेन वी से मे ऑल पीपल बी एट पीस कल्याण प्रार्थना सर्व कल्याण प्रार्थना It says, "Durjana sajjano bhuyat." Those who are on the wrong path, and they are durjanas, may they become sajjanas. May they come to the right path. They may become good, dharmic people who will give up their desires only for their selfish enjoyments and think of the larger good. Durjana sajjano bhuyat. सज्जन शांति मापनुयात एंड दोज हु आर सज्जन मे दे अटेन पीस बिकॉज बिकमिंग सज्जना इज वन थिंग अटेनिंग पीस इज नेक्स्ट स्टेप विच कम्स बाय कामिंग दाइंड फर्दर शांतो मुच्चेत बंधे अटेन पीस मे दे अटेन मुक्ति आर दे बिकम फ्री फ्रॉम दी बंधना बंधे मुच्चेत वॉट इज अ बंधना बंधना इज बेसिकली दी ego the ego in its subtlest form so one should become free from that then what happens you become free and that mukta chanya vimochaye once you become mukta you help others also to become free anyan vimochaye you help others to become free now we will read from swami ji's uh, inspired talks swami vivekananda says <clears throat> we divide ourselves into two to love god myself loving myself god has created me and i have created god we create god in our image it is we who create him to be our master it is not god who makes us his servants when you know when we know that we are one with god that we and he are friends then come equality and freedom so long as you hold yourself separated by separated by a hair's breadth from the eternal one fear cannot go 
never ask that foolish question what good will it do to the world <coughs> let the world go love and ask nothing love and look for nothing further love and forget all the isms drink the cup of love and become mad say you o oh you forever my lord and plunge in forgetting all else the very idea of god is love seeing a cat loving her kittens stand and pray god has become manifest there literally believe this repeat i am thine i am thine for we can see god everywhere do not seek for him just see him may the word ever keep you alive may the lord ever keep you alive light of the word soul of the universe the absolute cannot be worshiped so we must worship a manifestation such a one as has our nature jesus had our nature he became the christ so can be and so we must be christ and buddha are the names of a state to be attained jesus and gautam gautama are the persons to manifest it mother is the first and the highest manifestation next the christ and the buddhas we make our own environment and we strike the fetters off the atman is the fearless when we pray to god outside it is good only we do not know what we do when we know the self we understand the highest expression of love is unification a persian sufi poem says this there was a time when i was a woman and he was a man still love grew until there was neither he nor i only i remember faintly there was a time when there was there were two but love came between and made them one knowledge exists eternally and is coexistent with god the man who discovers a spiritual life is is inspired and what he brings is a revelation but revelation 2 is eternal not to be crystallized as final and then blindly followed the hindus have been criticized so many years by their conquerors that they the hindus dare to criticize their religion themselves and this makes them free the foreign rulers struck off their fetters without knowing it the most religious people on earth the hindus have actually no sense of blasphemy to speak of holy things in any way is to them is it in itself a sanctification nor have any artificial respect for prophets books or for hypocritical piety the church tries to fit in christ into it not the church into christ so only those writings were preserved that suited the purpose in hand thus the books are not to be dependent upon and book worship is the worst kind of idolatry to bind our feet all has to conform to the book science religion philosophy is a most horrible tyranny this tyranny of the protestant bible every man in christian countries is a huge cathedral on his head and on top of that a book and yet man lives and grows and grows does not this prove that man is god man is the highest being that existed this is the greatest word we can have no conception of god higher than man so our god is man and man is god when we rise and go beyond and find something higher we have to jump off the mind not out of body and the imagination and leave this world when we rise to be the absolute we are no longer in this world <coughs> man is the apex of the only world we can ever know all we know of animals is only by analogy 
We judge them by what we do and feel ourselves. The sum total of knowledge is ever the same. Only sometimes it is more manifested and sometimes less. The only source of it is within. And there only is it found. So this is the uh, paragraph for our contemplation. One very uh, important thing which Swamiji has put it here is that in order to love God, it is a self loving the self. So as if we divide, it, divide ourselves into two. So this is a Vedantic idea. That it only Atman exists, only self exists everywhere. And when the self exists, it uh, just does not care for anything else. It is. But then comes the idea in the self that I must love. Then we divide uh, true into to myself and God. So myself, loving myself. Swamiji says this. Sri Ramakrishna used to say, there are two ways of uh, understanding spiritual unification or spiritual realization. One is that there is uh, 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 there is something like a sugar. So either I will taste the sugar or I will become the sugar. Becoming the sugar is jnana. And tasting the sugar, I have to be different from sugar. Then only I can taste. There has to be a bhokta and a bhogya. There should be uh, an enjoyer and a thing enjoy, being enjoyed. So that's the first thing. Second thing he says, uh, what good will this do, this kind of love for God? It is a foolish question. Uh, isms, give up all isms. Love and forget all isms. See the manifestation of God everywhere, which means see, see that uh, infinite oneness, infinite unity present everywhere. Seeing a cat loving her kitten uh, and stand aside and pray, oh, this God who is loving himself. You know, there is a Sanskrit, uh, one Hindi poem is there. It says, uh, I think it's Kabir Das Ji's Doha. It says, Ghat Ghat Me Panchi Bodhata. It is the same. Panchi is the divine bird or divine reality. He's as if, you know, he's uh, sounding and making sound everywhere. Gatagat me panchi bolata, apahi taraju, apahi batta, apahi baita tolata. So think of uh, the process of weighing. So apahi taraju, so he is the weighing scale, taraju. And he is the uh, holding it, and there is a batta, weight. He is the batta, he is the taraju, he is the scale, he is the weight, and he is kind of doing the weighing process also. So he has become everything. This is what Swamiji is saying here. Another thing is that um, Christ and Buddha were the names of states to be attained. So Buddha himself says, I am a state. <coughs> so I am at uh, um, uh, Gautam attained that state. So Gautam Buddha. Buddha is a state. What is that state? State of consciousness, state of understanding, that inner growth which has happened, so to say. So when we pray to God outside, uh, it is good. Only we do not know what we do. We know the self, we understand. The highest expression of love is unification. A man is also a limitation. Woman is also a limitation. So if you think you are a man, uh, the, so I am speaking from a very spiritual angle. So if I am thinking I am a man, then uh, I am not a woman. And if I am a woman, I am not a man. So this kind of limitation is there. So this kind of abhava is there. No, in the highest spirituality, there is no abhava. There is no man, no woman. There is only one God. And he is manifested as various way, in various ways. Father Swamini says that um, the most religious people on earth, the Hindus, have actually no sense of blasphemy. This Swamini has said in two, three places. That the most religious people, most spiritual people, it is not the ego of being a Hindu that Swamiji is saying. The very fact it is so clear 
Swamiji says, a Hindu does everything spiritually or religiously. He eats religiously, he drinks religiously, he marries religiously. And he may even do stealing and murdering religiously. Which means he tries to bring in God in everything that he does. We are not justifying uh, crime. We are only referring to how the Hindu mind is so connected with spirituality. And then uh, Swamiji refers to Christ and church. Uh, church is like a framework. And Christ is being fitted into it. And what doesn't uh, fit into the framework, the church, then uh, the church throws off. The Christ is thrown on, so to say. That's what you see in many of the <clears throat> uh, doctrines of the Christian church. Uh, the, the Red Sea scrolls came up and many other things. They simply rejected it because it did not fit into their idea of preaching. So there was a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. His name was Swami Abhedarandaji. Uh, Swami Vivekananda, he went to the West and preached as we know for four, four years he went. And Swami Abhedarandaji stayed for 25 years. Uh, he, his complete works are also there, around eight volumes, nine volumes separately. He was a very learned man. And uh, he <clears throat> used to say, and he wrote a small book also on that, why a Hindu accepts church, accepts Christ, but rejects churchianity. You accept Christ, but reject churchianity. So, or we accept Christianity, but reject churchianity. So, churchianity means the church doctrines and all that. But Christ has no problem. <laughs> that is same because Hindus are so broad, they will include everything. <clears throat> and finally, in the last thing Swamiji says, that we... The sum total of knowledge is ever the same, only sometimes it is more manifested, sometimes less. So the only source of it is within and uh, there only it is to be found. So that's the reading for today. I contemplated on the meaning to some extent. So let us now, next 20 minutes or so, we shall try to sit quietly calming the mind. So close your eyes and sit straight. Keep your head and uh, spine straight line, straight. Don't, uh, don't slouch forward uh, or don't be hunched back deep. Just straight. Sthiram Sukham Asanam. Sit Sthiram without movement and Sukham without any discomfort. You should always wear, um, you know, loose clothes so that you feel comfortable. There is no necessary to pull one's pant or uh, garments to sit. Sit, query such clothes which are making you comfortable. Let us relax the mind. First of all, let go all worry and fear. Let there be no worry of any type and no fear. Both are interrelated. So let us not have any fear of future, fear of what may happen, fear of any, any aspect of life, any issue. Feel that you are the divine. You are the infinite being. I may not know that I am an infinite being, but I believe the Upanishads, the Rishis, the great teachers of spiritual illumination, they all say that we are all divine. We mistakenly think we are body. We mistakenly think we are our mind, our ego, or a mixture of these three. And we limit ourselves and we suffer, we are sorrowful. All this is not reality. The reality is that we are the infinite being, we are pure. 
we are eternally pure. We are never a sinner. We make mistakes, body and mind does do, do, do because the ego, because the desires, we make that. But let us not emphasize that. Remember something in you which is never affected by these things. It is the like the waterproof. So we are the sorrow proof. We are the proof uh, against all things which uh, make us small, make us feel small. We are sorrow proof. We are worry proof. We are uh, you know impurity proof. None of these things. Uh, whatever we seem to trouble us, to make us sorrowful. No, we are away from that. We are the pure one. Remember that, first of all. Let's have a complete faith on our divine nature. Let's have a complete faith on <clears throat> our capacity to manifest that divine nature. Let us relax. Let us let go all that which is causing us restlessness. Let us feel at peace and pray for the well-being of all. Sarva Kalyana Prarthana. Hatred for none. Violence against none, wishing love, peace, understanding for the good of all. Those who are on the wrong path, may they come to the right path. Those who are causing trouble to others, may their understanding change. May they undergo a transformation. May good come to them. And those who are good, may they help others to become good. May all be at peace. May no one suffer from misery, pain, disease, sorrow. Let us pray for the good of all. Now, let us try to 
further proceed let us mentally bow down to all forms of god to all great sages of meditation may their blessings be upon us and come to the present moment present moment present time right now right this place right this circumstances all of us are sitting before our mobile or the laptop this is our present situation we have closed our eyes we are sitting before the device we are listening to these instructions whatever be our situation in life circumstances in life right now we are here in front of this and trying to trying to calm the mind to purify the mind we are all practicing inner concentration we are close to our eyes this we are sitting we are sitting on chair or sitting on a bed or on the floor think feel that you have uh, feel the sensation on your legs on both your feet the toes the sole of the both the feet begin with that it's called body scan scanning the whole body kind of by our own mind not through my machine by our own mind this helps us to bring the mind to the present moment think of the calf muscles the knee joints it is so important for us to make movement the knee joints the thighs the hip joints both the legs feel them means the spine base of the spine to the top of the spine feel that that is the place of neurological activity and so necessary to keep us straight erect think of the collar bones the shoulders both the hands lower arm upper arm feel that way think of the chest heaving up and down indicating breath feel your breathing right up to the abdomen try to feel the heart beat the neck feel the neck <clears throat> the head ears forehead eyebrows eyes tip of the nose cheeks 
chin, whole face, the whole body frame. We are sitting peacefully, calmly. This is our body. This is a human instrument, the human frame, which is so essential for any higher realization. We are all blessed to be humans. Think of the energy, the power, the prana shakti, the vital energy in us. Think of that. It is uh, expressed or manifested through the breathing. Think of the breathing also. How we are breathing in and breathing out, in and out, feel it. Breathe in and breathe out. Feel this. And as you breathe in, feel that you are breathing in holiness, calmness, purity. It's like putting a pure water inside the ink pot. And then we wash it, so to say, with pure water. And throw out the impure water. So we are breathing in purity and breathing out impurity and restlessness and all negativity. We are just throwing it out. Now come to the mind. <clears throat> Feel that you have a mind. Feel that. Think of your thoughts as a separate being, which means <clears throat> you are looking at your mind. Just as you look at any object, stationary object or moving object. So our mind is always moving. Think of it. We are looking at it. Thoughts are coming, along with that various emotions are coming, memories, desires, worries, fears. <coughs> Let us just observe them, don't analyze them, don't try to push them off, be indifferent to them, be totally indifferent.
And now think of a point or an object for concentration. Think of a divine object, the, the face of a divine being, any god or goddess, or any great sage. Think of the face of Sri Ramakrishna or Swami Vivekananda or any other great soul. Or just think of the flame of a burning candle. Unflickering flame, peaceful, bright. Choose one of these. For all your meditations, always have the same object. Think of it in the center of the chest. We shall chant Om, long Om once. And for a few minutes, try to concentrate on that. Let us now relax and con conclude the meditation. <clears throat> Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityur Mamritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Hari O Let us conclude our meditation by praying for the good of all and open nights. Thanks, Maharaj. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand or type it in the chat box. Maharaj, I have one question. Uh, why Swamiji says that uh, 
the following book is also idolatry so what actually <clears throat> swami ji's views about uh, book is not to be taken only in this uh, one statement in one place swami ji says <clears throat> without a book no religion can survive for long so what is meant by idolatry is that the uh, following book is an idolatry which means not realizing your real nature but just sticking to the book kabir das ji says tu kehta pustan ki lekhi main kehta aankhon ki dekhi so pustakon mein jo likha hai what is written it's okay to begin with i take it as a reference book it's just like a science so in science uh, suppose you are doing your experiments in chemistry so you have written so many things this is so this is so this is so if you mix this chemical with this chemical you will get this result but if i get struck with that it's idolatry i must be able to experience it myself so by idolatry is meant something which i i bow down without uh, realizing its uh, without realizing its real spirit that's idolatry but in if you take a larger sense oh then uh, all this idols <coughs> uh uh idols are there these idols are uh, useless as some people say you know and this uh, uh, there is the islamic tradition is very much against uh, what they call as but parasti possibly the person who said that he has never understood the hindu idea of worshiping the image even the, among the hindus also we have the arya samajis you know do not believe in worship of the idols they were just want to do yagyas so that's their way of looking at it they can quote from their uh, some vedic tasya pratimana vidyate some statement is there but in sanatan dharma we all know uh, there's a great psychological need for us to put on the put our faith on some idol it helps it helps to swami ji one one of the things he says uh, these idols are like the uh, like the pegs keel jaise hota hai a hook to put our to hang our faith on faith we have to hang on so some people it's a great help point is that you should understand the spirit behind it so the spirit behind it is that i must say a person worships uh, uh, what we call as the uh, shalagram shila it's only a small piece of round stone shalagram or a shivling so it's just a piece of stone no but it represents the infinite reality so the pratika that must be understood so if i don't understand what is written in the book which means i don't try to follow it then uh, i really fail <laughs> that's the point thanks maharaj there is a question here yes maharaj maharaj biplav this question is from biplav it is only difficult to concentrate mind on either shri ramakrishna face or holy Ma- holy mother or a candle light the image itself is blurred and flickers maybe uh, for time being to begin with you can just keep a picture and 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 focus your eyes on that when that uh, and then oh, take it for some time again close your eyes put it back see it again for some time so this uh, initially initial this practice should help you similarly uh, you can burn a lamp if you so wish it can help you but later on finally we will be able to so internalize this image that we will not require anything external thanks maharaj for us next question mm-hmm. is from diya sarkar how to get away with the feeling of jealousy which we as students often feel when our friends perform better than us in exams ha ah, it is actually jealousy is always <clears throat> uh, it, it is almost cultivated in our in our system uh, because competition is cultivated so along with competition comes jealousy also so who is number 1 in the class so that's the point so that makes me feel that i am less important or less something so we should uh, analyze our mind thoroughly uh, why do i become jealous 
I become jealous because I wanted to attain something which my friend has attained. Uh, and he has got it better than me. So he's getting all the public applause. And now he will be getting what I, uh, they will be getting a job or getting a number one a preference and all that. That we should uh, understand the larger picture of life. The larger picture of life is that there's a place for everyone. <clears throat> So on one side, there is a competitive picture of life. On the other side is, it's not the competition which is going to solve the problem. That it is rather my, uh, that I should be able to see that if I deserve something, Swamiji says in his Karma Yoga lectures, that if I deserve something, I will get it. If I, what I desire, I may not get it, but what I deserve, I will get it. So for time being, because of jealousy, I may be put elbowed out. But uh, sooner or later, I will get it. So we must have, it is, you know, by Stephen Kobe, uh, Stephen Kobe in one place, he says, you have got uh, the abundant attitude or a scarcity attitude. The scarcity is only this much is there. Or I can have it. You can have it. <coughs> I can't have it. So that's a scarcity thing. Whereas uh, abundant is, no, there's a place for everybody. So suppose I don't become the director of some institute. That does not take away my self-importance. Because even if I become a director, it's only for a time being. I'll become director for five years, five years or two terms or three terms. Then I have to retire. Even the greatest of the lions has to retire in the, in the jungle, has to die one day. So let us not put, pin our whole hope only on that. It requires a mature attitude towards life, what life can give us. We only have, you know, created our minds, the feeling, oh, if I don't get this, I'll be uh, helpless, meaningless. It's only imagination. We can still be very happy. So it's a larger issue. Let us try not to fall into that. That's the point. Thanks, Maharaj. Maharaj, the next uh, question. Maharaj, I, uh, I have a question, Ankush. Last. Okay, Venkat. Is there any other question? So, uh, Namaskar, Maharaj. So, uh, Maharaj, I have a question. When we, uh, in the starting today's lecture, we have that we should be thinking of ourselves as divine and uh, we should uh, be in a state that we are the divine, which we are worshipping. So, when we do this, there are some times and some output things which we come into ourselves as a part of ego that we are already the divine why we need to realize it that's the first question why uh, and the second one is through bhakti marga to dvaita we should go to advaita so how come it be possible and what is the clear path to it oh your question is a very larger question it requires a lot of explanation i'll make it very short so first of all that if i am already divine why I have to think myself as divine? If you had realized it, there is no need for meditation also. Tell me, all you are always in that state of mind. Since we have not taken, uh, we have not reached that, so we take help of these uh, suggestions, uh, these tools. And meditation is a tool. It is just like you want to sleep. So you put on a nice, since now it is you know winter. A severe cold. So put on some uh, heater, uh, take some kambal and take mantra jai and take this. But that's not sleep. And when you fall into sleep, nobody will say, I am trying to sleep. Once you fall into sleep, you are, you are, you are not uh, acting sleep. You are not making an action called sleep. It is happening. Same way, uh, when I realize I am divine, I need not make any state. There's only only silence. Only silence. But since we are struggling to rise to our lower nature, this helps us. That's the point. And from Advaita to uh, from Dvaita to Advaita, as you said. So we need to understand that first we begin with the Sakara, then we reach the Niraka. This we will find in Sri Ramakrishna's life also. Any other question? Yes, Maharaj, one question is there, but we have six minutes or so. Pranam, I'll Maharaj, make it very short. I often struggle with goal setting in my life. My question is, what should be the goal of life as a young man? 
Uh, I would suggest you to please read Swami Vivekananda's Karma Yoga. It should help you. Uh, so one thing is that uh, uh, there the first few things you see we we are setting goal. We want to become famous. We want to attain something. We are different things at that. Try to have a goal because without goal, a person will make fifty uh, thousand mistakes, and with goal, he may make ten thousand mistakes. It's better to have that. So have a goal. The so goal finally is ultimately goal is God realization or self realization. Other goals are meant to give us some self fulfillment, self actualization. Suppose you you like the uh, painting, so you start doing painting, then it gives you self actualization. No, I like architecture, I like mathematics, whatever you like. That if you are able to put into that, makes you feel very actualized. So this much. Thanks, Maras. Maras, there was mm. one more question. What is mind actually? Mm. How will define it? This was from Soham Dalal. So this is called antakkarana mind. So please remind me next time I shall explain it. Sure, Maharaj. Ah. And uh, by the by, uh, I must thank all the variety friends. We had a very good uh, time in uh, we our uh, we, uh, Samiti people sponsored buying of three hundred kambals blankets. We have recently distributed to all the poor people. Uh, this time we went to seven or eight different places. Our volunteers and monks had gone. It has uh, sent the pictures. You can share it with others. Sure, Maharaj. Thanks, Maharaj. Mm -hmm.